In this video, I'm going to talk about these five keys to unlock divine power. Here's what I understand to be true from my knowledge. If you forfeit any of these keys, you also forfeit divine power. So if you're working in the direction of spiritual understanding and it's not breaking through, then watch this video. Hey, it's Matthew David. Here are five keys to unlock divine power. Obviously, there's more to the story here, and this is just a, an overview. If you've already been practicing spiritual healing, divine reflection, this is a checklist to make sure you don't miss anything, all right? And this is from my experience. I want to share it with you. I think it's very, very powerful. Okay, now, the first step is, have you set aside all material remedies Choosing in your heart to rely on divine mind alone as a curative power and principle. This is a very, very big idea. Because if you haven't, then you have not yet restored the first commandment. If God alone is, any human act or volition of mind to remedy any circumstance or situation is a reinforcement of the very thought that is causing the disturbance. All right. Now, it took me a long time to figure this out because you can deny and lie to yourself. You can say, well, OK, I'm using this supplement. I'm using this medication. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But, you know, I'm trusting God. I'm really putting my faith in God. Well, it really doesn't work that way because you haven't yet given all power back to God. You have to give all power back to God. All power has to go back to God, all right? And if you have, this is a big deal. Then you've restored the first commandment. This is huge. So you give yourself a check mark. This takes a lot of courage and a lot of faith. And obviously, I'm not your doctor here. I'm not here to heal, prevent, treat, cure, or diagnose a disease. That's not the purpose here. I'm giving you spiritual understanding in the capacity of ministry, all right? The second thing is, is have you decided to be ye perfect, even as your father is perfect? Now, in order for you to be perfect, you're going to have to step out of identifying as anything less than that. All flesh is corrupt. You can't be of the flesh and of the spirit with one foot in each world. You have to choose this day whom you're going to serve, the father of lies, or are you going to step into being God's child? Romans Eight is a very good book to read. For the law of the Spirit sets me free from the law of sin and death. In Romans 8.10, if Christ be in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So to be perfect, even as your Father is perfect, this is going to go into step number three, but this is a decision you're going to have to make. Are you living after the flesh and minding the things of the flesh? Like, are you counting your, your macros and your calories and putting power in food? Are you putting power into supplements? Are you putting power into diseases and saying, well, this has a life, it has a cause, it has substance, it's acting upon, you know, part of God's creation. This is a big, big deal. And you're not going to get there just by understanding these keys. You're going to have to read Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. You're going to have to go to that foundational understanding and you're also going to have to obviously make a decision within yourself along the way. Well, who am I? Am I the child of this world or am I a child of God? If you've decided you're a child of God, then you've chosen to be perfect even as your father is perfect. So your DNA means does not apply. So all that stuff in the world don't apply to me anymore. My DNA is spirit. Key number three. This is huge. Are you praying without ceasing? Now, remember, I talked about the five steps that one of Mary Baker Eddy's students, F.L. Rawson, who was very, very uh, prominent and powerful in his community, uh, teaching people with very little experience how to apply these principles. All right. What he taught was five steps. And I made a video about it. And you can go back and watch that video. It's a whiteboard video just like this. All right. But praying without ceasing means to continuously use your two powers of denial and affirmation and to keep your thought on God in heaven consistently all day, every day. All right. If you've decided to do that, then you're you're choosing to do the work. 
you have to do the work. You have to do what is required of you to maintain, all right, your status as God's child. You have to uphold the integrity within your thought. That's where the action's going down. If you're doing that, you're almost there. There's a little bit more. Okay, now here's the next part. Are you rejoicing now, knowing that truth is always the victor? This is really challenging amid certain circumstances. I get it. You know, I've had to deal with, uh, you know, health challenges that were traumatically frightening. I'm telling you things that, you know, you'd, you'd want to just check out. You just want to leave the world altogether because you just don't want to live that way anymore. Well, how are you supposed to rejoice knowing that truth is the victor if you haven't broken free from those yet? Well, the thing we have to do and we're required to do is we're required to live by faith and not by human understanding. And to live by faith, and this ties in to the next one too, is to go to a spiritual principle, a spiritual truth, like in him, him there is no variableness, right? For he, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope and a future, to prosper you, not to harm you, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11. You have to know what God's word is. And then you set your affection upon it, just like the psalmist said in Psalm 91. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I shall deliver him. So the psalmist said it best in Psalm 91. So read Psalm 91, and if you just read down a little bit, it says, Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I shall deliver him. That's a direct promise from God, and God doesn't lie. Well, to set your love upon God, which is another word for good, you have to rejoice in the truth, even when it doesn't feel true, even when it doesn't look true. That's how you do your part of the promise. Your part of the deal is to set your love upon God, to set your affection upon the truth, not upon how bad it hurts, how bad you're suffering, how horrible it seems. This takes courage. All of this takes a lot of courage. But you can pray for courage knowing that there is only one mind and you reflect that mind and that mind is not afraid. It only has courage. It only has faith. Okay, lastly, are you seeking his understanding with faith that he will answer? Every problem is really a wisdom problem. It's an opportunity to know God more. So when we are afflicted, we're supposed to rejoice because the affliction is a shadow of a spiritual truth that is trying to emerge in us. For example, when I used to be, you know, poor, I never could get ahead. I tried so hard. And then I learned about tithing. I learned about putting God first. Same thing, put God first. I set aside all my material human reasoning that my job was my source, that my education mattered. All of these things were just human reasoning alibis, but they didn't produce any fruit. So all of that struggle was forcing me to seek him. That was the hidden blessing. And then when I found out that I could just trust God entirely and I could activate my faith through tithing and that I could put him first and put no other gods before him, no other causes, no other, no other anything, just him alone. I began to prosper wildly, like tremendously. And this applies not just to finances, it applies to every area of your life. See, so what's really happening is when you're in the middle of a struggle, it's beckoning you to dig deeper because there's more, there's more good that's trying to come forth. The, the suffering is the shadow. It says in the, in the Nag Hammadi Library in the Gospel of Truth that all suffering is the result of ignorance of the Father. This ignorance brought about, you know, suffering, okay? But we are to know him. And the knowledge of him and his word and his truth is what sets us free. So are you seeking his understanding? Are you going there knowing that he will answer? He will guide you. He will bring you a teacher. He will open up a word for you. He will lead you to the promised land. If yes, check. And from my experience, what I've understood in my journey is that when you check all of these five boxes, 
you can expect to see a massively radical transformation. This doesn't just apply to health issues. It applies to finances. It applies to relationships. It applies to everything because everything is one thing. Are you the reflection of God or are you the reflection of this world? You choose.